Hi, this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. I'm restoring an ARP axe right now and I came across a problem that I thought might be interesting enough to share with you. The problem is with the filter. So the filter is passing a signal, but it's not filtering the audio. So here I have the cutoff frequency fully raised. That's not the correct response from the filter. Usually when the filters fail, they don't pass a signal at all. So at first I figured this was just a very poorly calibrated synth, but the filter calibration trimmers have no effect. I already verified the control voltage being fed into the filter is correct and that it changes as I adjust the controls. So it's looking like the problems with the filter. The problem is, with the filter installed in the synthesizer, I have no access to its components. Right now, I can only get to the pins that have the filter inputs and outputs. And even if I remove this board from the panel, the filter's still upside down and I can't see com what components I'd be probing. So let's get the filter out and install it in my filter test rig. This is the test fixture that I showed a few videos back. It allows me to hook up an ARP filter and fully test it outside a synthesizer. In that last video, I demoed it with some working filters, but today we're going to get to use it to fix this broken filter. And since that last video, I got my BNC jacks in, and I now have my scope and my signal generator connected directly with BNC cables. You can see I've already recapped this filter to replace the tantalum capacitors, and I've also done the enhancement to correct the cutoff frequency limitation. So you know what you're looking at on the scope. The yellow trace is channel 1 of my scope, which is the BNC cable connected to the output of the filter. The blue trace is channel 2, which is what I'll be poking with my probe here. I'm feeding the filter a square wave, and right now I've got the cutoff frequency fully raised and resonance all the way down. So we're seeing the square wave coming out of the filter as we'd expect. Now I'm going to lower the cutoff frequency, and I'm lowering it and now it's all the way down and you can see that there's no change to the output waveform so our problem is definitely with the filter for reference here's the same experiment on a known good filter with the cutoff frequency turned all the way up we have our square wave as our output and as we lower the cutoff frequency like I'm doing now the harmonics get stripped away until we wind up with a sine wave and if we keep lowering the cutoff frequency we can go all the way down to the point where there's no output signal. So here's the schematic for the ARP 4075 filter. It's a four-pole filter and the heart of it is this four-stage ladder made with some matched pairs of transistors and a Norton op amp, LM3900. But there's some auxiliary circuitry here. There's some circuitry that creates a negative 13 volt and a negative 6 volt rail from the minus 15 volt rail of the synthesizer. There's an exponential converter which converts a linear control voltage to an exponential current and there's a couple other things. My normal process of troubleshooting is first to verify the power rails are correct and then dive into the area where I most suspect the problem to be. So we're going to be checking the minus 13 and minus 6 volt power rails that get generated by the filter and then since basically the filter isn't responding correctly to the control voltage being fed, we'll want to check out the exponential converter. So this transistor here is Q15, and it's labeled as the supply conditioner on the schematic. The schematic shows the minus 15 volt supply going through a diode and then through this transistor and giving us a minus 14 volt rail. Well, we know the emitter of that transistor has to be at least three diode drops above the minus 15 volt rail, so we're talking more in the range of expecting to see minus 12 volts to minus 13 volts there. So let's probe along the pins here of Q15 and I'm using the measurement function of the oscilloscope here so we're seeing minus 13.8 volts on the collector minus 13.2 volts on the base and minus 12.6 volts on the emitter so all is well next up we're going to look at this next transistor here Q16 which is labeled as the supply rail splitter on the schematic this transistor is doing exactly what the label says it does. It more or less halves the minus 12 volt rail we just created. I say more or less because there's an extra diode drop there from the transistor that'll make this a little less than half the minus 12 volts. 
So we're looking to see somewhere on the order of minus 5 volts to minus 6 volts. So let's probe along the pins of Q16. This is a little uh, tucked in there a little more than the other one, so it's going to be a little trickier to probe. Uh, but on the collector, we're seeing minus 12.6 volts, which is what we saw on the emitter of Q15, so that's, that's no surprise. On the base, we're seeing minus 6 volts, and on the emitter, we're seeing minus 5.4 volts. So that's okay. So basically, the power rails created by the filter and, of course, being provided to the filter are fine. So now let's move on and check the exponential converter. To test the exponential converter, I'm going to probe right here. And I'm expecting to see some negative voltage that decreases as I lower the cutoff frequency of my test fixture. So I've got the scope hooked up to that point and I'm lowering the cutoff frequency. And what I'm seeing is that output from the exponential converter is at zero volts ground and it doesn't change as I uh, change the cutoff frequency for my test fixture. For reference, here's the same point on the good filter that I showed earlier. Right now I have the cutoff frequency raised all the way. You can see the square wave output there. And the voltage at the output of the exponential converter is sitting at about minus 1.8 volts. Now as I lower the cutoff frequency, you'll see the, not only the output getting stripped um, of its harmonics, but the uh, voltage at the output of the exponential converter drops all the way down to minus 5.8 volts with the filter completely closed. And you'll notice, if you watch that blue line, this time I'll turn the knob um, kind of at a constant rate, you'll notice that this drops kind of logarithmically. So as I begin to turn it, it drops quicker, and then as I get towards, uh, towards the end, it goes slower. Um, so that, that's the linear to exponential converter, um, actually in a way that you can see it. So here in the exponential converter we only have a few components. We have two regular resistors, a ceramic capacitor, a Tempco resistor, and a complementary pair of PNP and NPN transistors. The only parts I'd expect to see fail would be the Tempco and the transistors. So we can measure the Tempco in circuit here. One end of the Tempco is connected to ground because the filter now is not connected to anything. Uh, basically one leg of the Tempco is essentially lifted. So getting in here without blocking it, it's a 1.87 kilo ohm Tempco, and we're measuring about one exactly that. I mean, the heat from my hand is going to affect things as I as I measure it. But uh, so the Tempco looks good. So our problem has to be with one or both of these transistors here, which comprise the exponential converter. And we could probe them with the oscilloscope to figure out which one is the bad one, but it really doesn't matter. They're coupled together with this little copper, copper band um, uh, for thermal purposes. So to remove the bad one, we need to remove the other one as well. So it would just be quicker to test them when we have them out. So here's a little Chinese transistor tester built from a kit. And we're going to test the red NPN transistor. And it says... No unknown or damaged part. I'll make sure I have it in there firmly. Yep, that transistor is bad. Let's check the uh, blue PNP transistor. Make sure that I get each leg in its own little slot there. And the, uh, the PNP side tests okay. So we, we found our bad part. It's just a single bad NPN transistor. Let's replace it and retest the filter. All right, with the new transistor in, I've got the filter back in the test fixture. And now, lo and behold, when I lower the cutoff frequency, it's filtering. So let's get this into the synthesizer and actually hear it now. So I put the filter back in and I was able to calibrate it and now it's working as it should.
You'll notice that I've got LED sliders in this axe. I finally got around to making LED slider kits for both the Odyssey and the axe. Uh, but that'll be the subject of another video. So we've achieved our mission of repairing the filter in this ARP axe, and I hope you found the process to be interesting. I noticed we hit 2,000 subscribers recently. I want to thank everyone who subscribed to my channel. I honestly never believed that many people would be interested in these kind of repair videos. It's a very specific subject matter. I'll be back soon with more videos. This has been SynthChaser from SynthChaser.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day.